My, my lord, ladies and, and gentlemen, I do uh, admire the management of the Freedom Association of leaving me to speak until everybody's drunk. <laughs> but uh, to be serious for a minute, the image at the center of the struggle for freedom 799 years ago was Magna Carta. It was a benign image. The image at the center of the struggle for freedom today is the European Union, and it is a satanic image. Its champions bribe us by the lie that the EU guarantees our personal prosperity, and this lie becomes a threat when they add that were we to leave the EU, the continent would be plunged into yet another catastrophic war. Bribes, lies, and threats then. Unaccountability. The bureaucratic institutionalizing of corruption. The word for all this is totalitarianism. And the word is apt and true because the EU had its origin in the mind of Adolf Hitler and his cronies in the earliest years of the Second World War. Now this is not another conspiracy theory. This is not paranoia. It is not even my mere opinion. It is fact. And I shall now present documented proof from an authority at the highest level. In his magisterial study, Hitler and Stalin, Parallel Lives, Alan Bullock gives us chapter and verse, dates and times, and the names of the people involved, all authenticated by policy papers written at the time. This is what Bullock says. I quote, as early as May 1940, Hitler's campaign in the West had given an impetus to discussions of a European Großraumwirtschaft, an economic sphere of influence. This was in line with Hitler's insistence that the European economy must be reorganized in such a way as to make Germany economically self-sufficient. Hitler said, we must conquer to achieve the things that we need, but lack. Hitler said to Tote in June 1940, and Goering instructed Funk to set up a special department in his economics ministry to present plans for what he called a, Europe a unified European Großraumwirtschaft under German leadership. I continue to quote, the heart of this was always seen as the Reich, itself expanded by the annexation of Austria, Bohemia, Moravia, Alsace-Lorraine, Luxembourg, Belgium, and the provinces recovered, recovered is really the word, from Poland, including Silesia, and most of Europe's heavy industries were to be concentrated in this area, which would then play the same role in the European economy as the Ruhr had in Germany. Apart from that, the rest of the conquered territories of Europe would provide food for the guaranteed German market. Centralized planning, including the control of credit and labor, would create an international economy tailored to suit the needs of the Germans. Now, that's quite a bit of detail for us to chew on, isn't it? But there's more, a lot more. Bullock, Quoting from Nazi documents of the time adds, all the occupied territories were required to pay levies. These had to be paid, as in all other transactions with the Germans, at an artificially high rate of exchange fixed in favor of the Reichsmark. That was decreed back in 1940. In, nine, in 2014, the people of Greece, Italy, Portugal, and Spain are experiencing the agony of it in the form of the imposed currency, the Euro. Bullock further reports, the gold and foreign currency reserves of occupied countries were taken over and their banking systems manipulated to give the Germans control over the issue of banknotes and the granting of credits. 
there you have the origins of the European Central Bank. I continue to quote from Bullock's revelatory account. Industry in the occupied territories was controlled by a system of licenses for raw materials and fuel, agriculture in Western and Southeast Europe through the local ministries of agriculture. Yes, Professor Bullock, we know nowadays it's called the common agricultural policy. Also, I quote, Goering planned the European economy of the future by setting up integrated structures aimed at controlling production in the aluminium, coal and oil industries on a European-wide scale. Plans for other European production controls were drawn up in textiles, iron and steel and chemicals. Now Bullock's book was first published in 1991 and it has gone into five editions. As none of our pro-EU politicians, sycophantic media commentators, and avid federalists even read it. Seventy years on, we know the truth. What Hitler failed to achieve by force of arms, what the Kaiser failed to achieve by the same means in 1914, and Bismarck before him in 1870, successive German chancellors, the latest being Frau Angela Merkel, have achieved by economic muscle and the centralized bureaucracy of the EU, that is control of all Europe and the subjugation of the poorer agricultural states from the Baltic to the Atlantic seaboard. In 1945, Hitler was finally put down and the people of England rejoiced. But this was not the end of totalitarianism, as we thought at the time, only its perpetuation. It's solidifying into the strangulating tyranny of the European Union. We need a new great charter. It is this, better off out. Yeah, yeah.